What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff, and for you guys today, I'm going to be grading Ari Alexa LF and LF Mini footage for the first time ever. For many video guys, the Alexa LF is the holy grail camera, with its large sensor, high bit rate, and amazing colour science. I don't know what's going to happen when I grade it, but let's find out. Roll that intro. <laughs> Of course, if you enjoy this free and unsponsored content, please do me a solid, leave me a like, definitely get yourself subscribed, it really means a lot to me. Thank you kindly. I'm going to grade in my editor of choice, which is Final Cut Pro, but the principles apply to all editors, whether you're into Final Cut or Adobe Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or whatever. Anyway, let's not waste any more time, let's get into grading this large format high bitrate loveliness. When you first import ARRI footage into Final Cut, you'll notice that Final Cut will actually apply an ARRI Log C to Rec. 709 conversion lookup table. Now, of course, that's fine for some, but that's not how I like to grade. So, in the inspector, when we click on the information tab, and then down the bottom, there's a drop down box. And if you go into general, you should see another drop down that says camera LUT, and just select none to turn off that conversion LUT. So, this is the first clip, and it's from the Alexa LF. And we start with a nice rack focus. She grabs the book thinks, yep, that's the only one I've got, so I'm going to read that. And then she goes and sits on the sofa. Of course, the lighting is perfect and there's no noise. It's so clean. What I want to do is introduce a bit more mood. And so here's the way I've interpreted this clip and how I think it should look and feel. You'll notice a lovely peachy warmth, really soft highlights, still detail in the shadows. The shadows aren't crushed. And yet there's something a little more cinematic looking about it. Let me show you what I did. Before I start my grade, I should say that you can also apply lookup tables that will add that Rec. 709 look, and then you can tweak from there. For example, I recently reviewed Motion VFX M Film Look plugin, which is great and gives you so many options, including four different versions of Log C to Rec. 709 conversion. Alternatively, you can go on Ari's website where they have a LUT generator. Just pick your settings, download, and then you have the exact lookup table you need for Rec. 709 conversion. Applied to your footage, it looks fairly standard, plenty of contrast and simple colours. And again, that's fine if that's what you're looking for. So for me, a must for grading is to turn on video scopes and I like waveforms. That way you can see exactly what's going on with the exposure in your scene. Now, I mentioned that peachy warmth that I wanted right at the start. So controversially, I'm going to add a lookup table right at the beginning that I know gives me that kind of soft peachy look. And then I'm going to grade into it. So next, I'm going to turn on an instance of colour wheels and I want to brighten up the image. And all I'm going to do is adjust the mid tones and bring them slightly up. I'm going to give the highlights a tiny tweak upwards, but of course I'm keeping an eye on where the lamps are on a waveform to double check they don't go too bright. Next I'm going to add an instance of colour curves, and this is one of my favourite things to do to really bring out the most in an image. And these can give you so much control as long as you add a lot of different control points. And all I'm going to do is just massage them until I'm happy that I've got the look I want. All the time I'm checking the waveform to check that things don't go in a direction that I don't want them to go. If you're interested to see the difference, this is before and then after. It's the subtle tweaks that add up. Next, I want a little more warmth and I'm gonna go into our color wheels and adjust the color temperature. It's really key that we're doing this before the lookup table because I'm not just adding a standard color warmth. I'm warming up the footage and then of course our lookup table will interpret that and adjust the colors with its parameters. Next, I've added another instance of color wheels at the end of our chain and any exposure tweaks we make at this stage will affect the output as opposed to making exposure adjustments before our lookup table. So we need to be very delicate. And all I want to do is just bring the shadows down a hair. Next, I'm gonna make some actual color adjustments. So back in our first instance of color wheels, and again, I'm adjusting color into our lookup table. At first, it may look like I'm doing the whole orange and teal thing, which I'm not. I'm really making just very minor adjustments here. After doing those color adjustments, I just want to check that the subject's skin tones are still okay. So I've dropped on a shape mask and I'm gonna select her face only, and then switch our video scopes to vector scopes and just check in on our skin tone line. Luckily, this looks all good to me. So I'm gonna add just a touch of saturation to the mid-tones just to make it a little bit more rich looking. Next, I want to add some cinematic fairy dust and I'm gonna to reach to my new go-to program for that, which is Motion VFX M Film Look. If you didn't see that review, I will link it below, but the real highlight is the grain module in this plugin. It's just so good. So I'm gonna zoom in and make sure I get it looking good. 
I demonstrate this much better in my review, but really the way that this renders grain is so beautiful and so authentic and convincing, it's almost worth getting this just for the grain. Next I added some widescreen bars because I like widescreen bars and I thought it might suit this scene. I went for 2.35 to 1 which is quite aesthetically pleasing. Of course I had to watch it through a couple of times and adjust the position offset to make sure the framing was good all the way through. Lastly I just added a small amount of vignette. I'm just using the basic one that's built into Final Cut. As usual the default controls are quite aggressive so I dialed back almost everything. So again here's our original Arri Log C footage. Flat, clean, beautiful, neutral and just a blank canvas. And then my grade with its cosy, peachy, warm feel. I've got another grading example coming in just a minute, but do let me know how you would approach grading this shot. The next clip I'm gonna grade is a strange one because it's this. Now this was shot with the Alexa LF Mini, but I thought this was a particularly strange choice from Ari. It's a cow. And then once graded, it looks like this. So because we've got such a mundane subject, I mean, really, Ari? This is what you chose to film with an Alexa LF Mini? Arguably one of the best cameras in production? Still, I thought we'd go for hyper-realistic, 3D looking, and just natural, as if you're there, type of grade. The first thing I'd noticed when I imported the footage is that this clip has an audio track, and I was like, great, except it sounds like this. Again, really, Ari? If you're gonna include audio, make sure it sounds good. If it sounds as bad as this, just don't even bother because this audio is useful to no one. Anyway, whinge over and let's get on with our grade. First of all, I'm gonna add an instance of color wheels followed by color curves. I'm gonna do nothing to them at the moment, I'm just setting them up. Instead, I'm gonna add a lookup table and I'm gonna use the one that I downloaded from the ARRI website. This gives us a fairly standard Rec. 709 to work with to get a really natural look. First of all, we can see this is fairly brightly exposed, so let's bring the exposure down just a touch. I will come back to our color wheels, but first I'm gonna head to the color curves and I'm gonna do my normal sculpting of our contrast curve. In the shadows, I don't wanna go too dark because it wouldn't be believable. And really with the rest of our control points, I want to bring out all the textures I can on our subject. I really love looking at the before and after as it seems like once you've done this stage it unlocks so much detail in the image. Next I'm going to go back into our colour wheels and just do a little bit of work by adding a touch of saturation, tweaking the colours just a tiny bit and mainly around the midtones and I'll do some minor exposure adjustments. Next I'm going to add another instance of colour wheels and I'm going to put it at the end of our chain and it's important that this goes after our lookup table because any tweaks here will determine the output brightness of our footage. So if you want some of the shadows in your footage to be black, and I mean truly black, as in 0%, if you try and do this before your lookup table, sometimes the lookup table itself won't allow you to do this. That's why we have to do it after our lookup table. Next, for an entirely unnecessary step, but I thought it'd be fun, I'm gonna add a third and final instance of color wheels, and I'm gonna add a mask over our subject's eye. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of lift and a little bit more contrast in general, and that's just to draw the viewer in. It's only a short clip, so I am gonna track it by hand. So I've set the playhead to the beginning, and I've clicked to add a keyframe. I'm just using my keyboard's right directional arrow to move it on a frame by frame, and I'm adjusting manually. And here we see the before and after, and I like the effect that this gives. Definitely draws the eye, but still not too drastic. But there's still something bothering me about this shot though, and you guessed it, it's the audio. I know we can make things feel more real and more immersive, so I'm gonna get rid of the entire original audio track. I then found an old clip where I knew that I'd used a proper microphone on my camera, and I remember hearing lots of sort of natural noises, birds and that kind of thing. So. I'm gonna nick it. So I'm gonna right click on the clip and select detach audio and just drag it into position. Next I've opened up the record voiceover box and I'm going to mimic what I think the cow sounds like chewing whatever it's chewing. Once that was done I added a little bit of EQ and compression to both of them which I'm not gonna go into in this video. I have done other really good examples of how to use EQ and compression in video. So here is our original ungraded clip with useless audio and then here's our graded version. So there it is, words don't really do the footage you get from the LF series justice. 
It's just so lovely and I can see why it's so many people's holy grail camera and I can see why Ari are struggling to produce enough of the LF mini series. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about grading this footage in the comment section below if you want to. Otherwise, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube recommends this one for you, hand-picked. The one below is my most recent upload. Anyway, until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. I'm bad at this Cause it's become the cameras of me